What's up guys, this is James from the Great Gampino channel and today I'm going to talk about my gaming PC build. In one of my previous videos, I tried the Oculus Rift out, and one of the statements I make during the video was that if a consumer version was available now, I would cancel my PS4 and my Xbox One pre-orders, and I would just put money into building something to play Oculus Rift. And I do know that Sony is working on their Morpheus, and I'm almost positive Microsoft has to be working on something as well, and I know that the consoles will get VR, but for right now, I think PC is a safe bet that you will get a better experience earlier on, and then as things get bigger and more mainstream, I think we're going to see that trickle down to the consoles and we'll have good experiences there as well. Anyways, after a few days of thinking it over, that's what I actually ended up doing. I canceled my PS4 and my Xbox One pre-order, then I began researching how to build a higher-end gaming PC. Some of you may recognize this build from the Linus Tech Tips video, Build a Better Gaming PC. After researching and looking around on YouTube everywhere, I had no idea how to build a gaming PC, but I felt like his tutorial was going to be the easiest to follow. He showed everything in great detail, so I do recommend if you're looking to build this gaming PC, check out the link below. Linus has lots of other great tutorials and tips and just product reviews that'll help steer you in the right direction. Starting out with the case, it's the Coolmaster CM Storm Scout 2 case. If you watch Linus Tech Tips, you'll notice he uses a white one. I changed it up by going with a black. It still has the windowed side that lets you see into the GPU and red LED front. It also has a removable top for a liquid cooling system. The Storm Scout case has openings that lead to the back side that is perfect for cable management. You could use some zip ties to bundle everything off and then reclose the door and you're good to go. The graphics card's one of the areas where I actually differed from the Linus Tech Tips tutorial. In Linus's video, they used the NVIDIA GTX 660 Ti, which is a really good graphics card, but because I was planning for virtual reality and I knew there was going to be at least multiple 1080p, possibly higher resolution monitors, I jumped up to the GTX 780. Keep in mind, while I was putting this together, the next step up in power would have been to go with a Titan if I still wanted to stay on a single card setup. I wasn't really looking to spend that kind of money, so the GTX 780 was more than enough for me. The CPU used in this build is an Intel Core i5-3570K, and I did try overclocking this, but I ran into some bottleneck problems, so I took the overclock off, and my frames per second jumped back up, so I'm probably going to stay away from overclocking and leave it for the pros. The hard drives are another area where I kind of did my own thing. For the main bootable and all my programs, I used a Samsung SSD 840 series 250 gigabyte, and for all my game storage and everything else, I used a basic Western Digital 1TB hard drive. For RAM, I used Corsair Vengeance 16GB DDR3 RAM. I probably only needed about 8GB for a decent gaming build, but because I am building this for VR and we don't have a consumer version to really set the requirements yet, I'd rather be safe than sorry. The cooler is a Corsair H100i, and one of the things I like about it is the software that it comes with. It allows you to change the LED lights on the Corsair logo that covers your processor to whatever color you want. This is great for matching any other LED lights your build may have. One of the other cool things you can do with the H100i software and LED combination is that you could set it as a warning system. Basically, it'll tell you the temperature of your CPU. Blue meaning cool, yellow, orange, and then finally red lets you know that it's getting really hot and you probably want to take a look at it. The power in this particular build is supplied by a Corsair G700 that has an interchangeable LED light that you can switch from red, blue, or white. The original headset that I used was the Kraken 7.1, but I wasn't very impressed with the sound for the money, and I didn't like the way they felt on my ears, so I quickly returned them and decided to go with the Logitech G430s. One of the things I like about the G430s is the size of the cups and the fact that they're made out of cloth. They feel a little bit more comfortable and my, my ears have room to breathe. It also comes with an external USB sound card for simulating 7.1 surround, and that works really well. If you're interested in this headset, I'm going to have a link down below to the Linus Tech Tips channel where he gives a full review of this product in greater detail. I didn't really do anything special for the mouse and keyboard, I just went on eBay and bought the cheapest gaming keyboard and mouse that I can find. I pretty much just went for something that had a look that I liked. Plus my plan was to use a controller for the most part because I was a console gamer so I didn't really think I would get much use out of the mouse and keyboard. As time went on I did find myself using them more and more often for games like Battlefield 4 so I probably will upgrade in this area at some point. For the controller, I went with an Afterglow Microsoft Xbox 360 controller. There's not much to say about this. It glows green, that was a matching color to my rig, and it has a wire, so it's a plug and play for PC. So that's pretty much all the parts. Right now, there really is no consumer version, so there's no way to really gauge what the requirements for VR gaming are going to be. I do feel like this is a good place to start. I am running an Oculus Rift developers kit, so make sure you look for those review videos that I will be putting up soon, and I'm going to have some more animations. Thank you for watching this video, and make sure to hit the like button. See you guys next time.